Hi, Doc, and welcome to a Watch Me Work video. Now, these nails, wow, let me tell you, I absolutely loved doing them because these are the Lewis Hamilton nails. So, we've already got the full set on. We're going to base coat, super, super thin application of your base coat. Make sure that you whip around the edge of the nail. So you're kind of like sealing the nail and capping it with the base coat. So my client came in to me and she was like, I want some nails for my son's birthday. He's a big Formula One fan. I said, oh, because you know me, I absolutely love Lewis Hamilton. And I says, oh, who's his favorite driver? She says, Lewis Hamilton. So I'm instantly filled with dopamine, love, love, love. I'm like, right, right, okay, okay, okay. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? This is amazing. And she was just like, well, it could just be like Lewis Hamilton inspired nails. So Lewis Hamilton, his colours are bright lime, yellowy green and purple. So we were like, oh, we could go with those colours. So we're using them. We're using Vegas Baby and we're going to use IBC. So these are the bright sort of Lewis Hamilton colours. But Lewis Hamilton has merch. If you've not seen Lewis Hamilton merch, you are missing out. I have worn it in videos because I am slightly obsessed with Lewis Hamilton because I'm sorry, why does he keep ghosting me? I <laughs> I am clearly his next girlfriend. He just doesn't know it yet. He hasn't met you yet. That's all it is. That's what it is. He doesn't realise how how much fun I am. So I was inspired by his merch that he did for the Japanese Grand Prix. Not this time, but the time before. However, he has used the same artist. So it's his merch has these different sort of symbols and logos. Um, so that's what we were initially inspired by and the colors in that merch collection. And what I shall do is we'll put some pictures of the merch and I need not to forget that either, so you need to remind me. Yeah. But then I was like, what do you think we should do a portrait of Lewis Hamilton? Not like a super realistic portrait, but you know, a portrait that's that resembles him at least. And yeah, that's what we did. So we planned out the design and the colours and everything like that. It's all very bright. We've used the colour Dan as well, which is pink. We're going to do two coats of the colour and yeah, this is our base. We've also used the colour, the orange is sham. So we this kind of pattern is on Lewis's merch. So we're using the colour Dan to create a pattern. And I think the orange and the pink, oh my God, they look amazing together. And then we're using the colour pony because, you know, it's, it's named after a Mustang. So these are racing nails. So why not use the colour pony? So we're kind of going with this pattern on these as well just to kind of tie in that's the hardest thing about doing these nails is is the planning out to make sure it's cohesive that the nails flow from nail to nail and it looks like a full set even though every single nail is different yeah they're Whether, completely different colors yeah. styles designs shapes yeah but it needs to be cohesive so that was the hardest part and i mean there's a lot going on a lot going on. I used the lily liner quite a lot in the design because I could do my swirly shapes. I could do those like interlocking swirly bits as well. And I could do those sort of like brush stroke lines. Um, so it was nice to be able to sort of have one brush that would do the majority of the work instead of having to pick up multiple brushes, which obviously in a salon environment is a lot easier. Then we're going to seal these nails with a glossy top coat. But we're not finished. Oh, hell no. This is just a background thing. We're not finished. There's so much more that goes into this set of nails. I mean, even those designs on their own are lovely. Mm -hmm. I love the contrast. So now we're going to use the Messy Nessie brush here. And I'm actually just sketching out a little saying that is a Lewis Hamilton saying. Um, so I, I, I looked it up and saw the different styles of variety and that it's done. But still we rise is a massive saying because if you are an F1 fan and you know the drama behind Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen, and if you're a Max Verstappen fan, I do feel sorry for you 
please <laughs> leave the channel. <laughs> I am not a Max Verstappen fan. I think he <laughs> is really arrogant and it's the four eye gap between the eyes for me. But <laughs> obviously, um, uh, he is a very good driver, but he has a very good car. Lewis's car is not so good anymore, but you know, so, you know, well done to Red Bull, but not well done to Max. Checo, I absolutely love Checo. If Checo could kick Lewis, if Checo could kick Max Verstappen's bottom, I would be so happy for Red Bull. I think you're talking gibberish to me now because I haven't watched Formula One in so many years. Yeah. I used to love it. So, in my opinion, um, Lewis should have won that eighth title he was robbed <laughs> all that drama no i'm sorry sorry to all you max the staff of fans and don't get me wrong i'm having a laugh with you guys this is not serious i'm having a laugh don't be like giving me no drama on on the inbox or the the chat box what was this design here so what? this is can you see the number yeah number eight number eight oh, he's number, number eight. eight is on his merch his number is number 44, and you did see me doing a number. Yeah, I saw that as well, yeah. So that's his number, and he's kept that number. When you are the world champion, you have the choice to choose number one. But no, Lewis has had the number 44 for that long that it, it's his number. He didn't want the number one. He's like, no, I'm going to keep 44. It means a lot to me. I don't need to be called number one. So you've got his number 44 on the yellow finger, but this finger here has a number eight on it. What do you think the meaning behind the number eight is? So, no idea. He ha so Lewis has seven world titles. Ah. Max was Stafford and the drama that went on for him to not win the eighth title because he pretty much, people do say he's an eight time world champion. They still say it because everyone knows he was robbed. Very, very political anyway. I'm not even going to go into that and back yeah. <laughs> but, so that's why he's got a number eight, because really, he, he is an eight-time world champion. That's my theory behind it anyway, but that, sh that can only be the reason that he's got a number eight on there. If it isn't, somebody tell me. Somebody tell me. But yeah, I love the pattern of it. And you'll notice I worked with the lightest colour first, and then I went in with sours, which is the green. The brighter green is sours over the top to create that highlight, sort of like lifting the colour, but we still got contrast. And then this, so every single design that we I'm putting on here is on Lewis's merch. So we're doing another um, design, which is an L and a H, obviously, for Lewis Hamilton, that's on his merch. And I'm again, I'm using the Lily Liner because it's going to help me get the length of straight lines. You know what I thought it was at first, that? I thought it was like the gear stick. You like you know where your gears go? Oh, my God! <laughs> You're such a bit like that. Oh, wait, I thought it was. Probably one cars don't work like that, babe. No, so, no, no. You've got like flip, a... flappy paddles. Flappy paddles, flappy paddles. Like I said before, the majority of this work was done with the Lily Liner brush. And it's a lot of people's go-to brush because it's so versatile. One thing I will tell you, Lewis did a collaboration with a super famous Japanese artist, a different one, and he did this like robotic woman, and that's like this Japanese artist's thing. Mm -hmm. that, that is thing. He's also done, this Japanese artist has also done this collab with um, The Weeknd. Recently, I saw a company that sells a lot of t-shirts. They are very famous for selling t-shirts and they have actually ripped off this Japanese artist's work, which I really don't agree with. You know, no credit given. It's not a collab. They well, are if you're selling it. something, you know what I mean? If you're selling yeah. something, other people, nah, that's not good. It's not good, is it? Whereas like, it'd be different if I was painting it on a nail. Yeah. Showing people how to you're paint. Selling, you're not actually, selling that. Selling actively making money from it. Yeah. And I really loved this company as well. You know, I really supported them. But when you're ripping off other people's artwork without asking, without permission, I'm sorry, it's a no from me. But yeah, so I this design 
it's giving me so much dopamine because I just love Lewis. But I, when you learn more about it, it, it makes you enjoy it even more. This is this is the nail. This is the nail. And I couldn't believe I was doing it. I am mapping out Lewis's Hamil Lewis Hamilton's face. Now I wish I do wish actually on this video here we just had a GoPro on your head. Yeah. <laughs> so we can see what you see because obviously when you're doing something like this you do have to sort of have it so that you can see it better than anybody yeah, else. Yeah, because you've so got to try and get the angles. Yeah, so what yeah. I did with the pencil was mark out um, the perimeter of his face, of that beautiful face, which was carved by angels. Um, <laughs> and while I was while I was painting it, I was thinking, um, am I going to be able to do it? So it does really look like him, but it's not going to be a realism portrait and when I say realism those that do tattoos or those have got tattoos so kind of know what realism portrait kind of work is like it's super high realistic yeah this is I, I want you don't get wrong it does look like him at the end but it's not it's not a photo it's not a photo yeah um I found an image of him online that was like a color block effect and that was where the inspo was from um Lewis has one eye that's slightly bigger than the other as well just saying, that's how much I look at him. Um, what do you think is quite... Yeah, I do too as well. I've got my, my right yeah. a little bit lazier than the left. Yeah. And his, his, his mum has the same as well. I think it's really cute. I absolutely love it. I'm like, I love him. I love him so much. Please, <laughs> will you come and find me, please? Please share this video to Louis. He's got to see it. He needs to see it. He just gets ghosting me. It's not fair. <laughs> um, so as you'll notice as I'm curing the base of Lewis's face I'm then working on another nail so I'm, I'm utilising my time with my client I mean I did say to her how much time do you have do you have more time than the appointment because this is something I want to do and I'm not going to charge any extra but this is what I want to do. Are you up for it? She was all up for it. What I want you to notice is on the face, yes, I'm going to mark out his, um, his eyes, nose, mouth, but the top section will be his hair, and I've not actually done his hair yet. So when you actually do a face, you need to consider the room for the hair because the hair takes off a lot of space. It could be a quarter of the design. So you need to think about the proportions. So now we're layering different skin tones. So I've gone from light beige Dave, we've mixed some colors with hot cocoa and cola. So this is cola, so we've got the different skin tones and you can see how they're like a color block effect. They're not all blended into each other. Um, and I do quite like these kind of designs. I love how that, like, look at the colour of that once it goes in the lamp. It's like it turns neon yellow. Like, how cool is that? Mm. So I'm looking at the image and going through the different sections. So I've started out with the palest first, and then I start to add the medium tones and then the dark tones. When I do portraits, I get scared because I think, well, it doesn't look like them. Oh, yeah, of course. You don't want... Do you, what about that, um, that statue of Ronaldo? You remember that? Oh my God, that statue of Ronaldo that they totally messed up and it just didn't look like him. It was it was strange, that was. Um, but the proportions, when you're doing portraits, it's the proportions. So that getting that composition right. The proportions between the eyes, the top of the forehead, and the eyes and the nose, and the nose to the mouth and the mouth to the chin, if that isn't right then it throws everything off and maybe we should do a video where i do a portrait and i show you how i really break it down because um i can put a grid over the top that'll help me with portions um we'd literally just do a whole video on just doing portraits because it's just, it's just difficult to get it all into one video Especially, it's like I need you to climb inside my head, really. And if you could just get inside the mind of Kirsty Mickey, and it, it, it's, it's a scary place. 
say that's a that's a very very uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's a scary it's a scary place but I'm I feel like I do a computer generated image in my head of how I need to do it so sometimes I'll write it down sometimes it's in my head and I can visualize it and I think that's one of the hardest things to do with nails is to visualize so if you struggle with visualization of what you're going to create definitely sketch it down map it out take your time you know don't get me wrong I know I'm doing this on a client and I know not everybody's going to have time to do stuff like this on a client but this nail on its own took me 40 minutes and that was just for this one nail which for me is I think it's pretty quick but it's still 40 minutes you know how much are you going to charge for that you've got to think about that as well think about your time and your products and your expertise and make sure you charge for it and then now we're going to go in with black and when we as soon as we start adding black things do really start to come to life so he has like a little he has like a little bit of a goatee kind of thing going on to our Lewis. It's bum so, fluffy. It is um, it is a bit bum fluffy. For somebody who's, you know, in the late thirties, it's still a bit bum fluffy, bless him. I can't grow up a beard. But I don't like hairy men. I'm not I'm not a fan of hairy men. I've never been with somebody or Okay, I might have been with somebody but not stayed with them because I can't I can't deal with hairy chest and have to wax it off. <laughs> the, the hairy chest, I can't do it. So you'll see I'm starting to add the black in and you I've started to go around the, the edge of his face and the edge of the top of his head. So if you look at the top of his head, Lewis Hamilton majority of the time has um braids. So he'll have cornrows, cane rows, whatever you want to call them. He has those. And so I've kind of like left those little spaces so you can see where his sort of cornrows are. You'll notice with a lot of um, Formula One drivers, they have a muscular neck. They never really have a skinny neck. And that's because they do this exercise where, imagine um, what they call those bands. Those are like big plastic resistance bands so they'll have those resistance bands and they do neck exercises with them they even have to do it with weights as well so they'll they will strengthen up the neck because of the impact in a car and the the vibrations and the shaking of being in a formula one car is so aggressive that your neck has to be super strong from that if you want to get into formula one and you've got sky if you watch um ted's um notebook you'll learn so much <laughs> ted's notebook who's ted so ted does all that he walks around after and he goes through all the different things like even he'll even go and show you so when they're packing down on the boxes it will say um where that cargo is going next and it's not always the next formula one race because of shipping it by boat to the next location. So they will have, say they have two or three lots of the stuff that they use, yeah? It'll go to somewhere else ready for that race. It won't go to the next race. Yeah. That makes sense. So it's like all little things like, I, 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 look, I find it fascinating and I'm sorry if you don't find it fascinating and I bored you. But I, it's just another thing. To, it's another thing that I love. And I'm sure, like, Adam could tell you about MMA and you might get bored out your brains with that because he knows a lot about MMA. And I'm just like, yeah, don't get it, Adam. Don't get it. <laughs> but there's just another side to me. But I do enjoy painting faces, even though it is, like, I get scared. But sometimes you just got to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. If you stay in your comfort zone forever, you will never progress. Your skills won't progress you know, your services won't progress either. I feel like I've never analysed Lewis Hamilton's face so much. So once you are happy with your portrait and your all your designs, you're going to top coat and seal them. I feel like it all comes together. 
as soon as you add that glossy top coat or you could even add a matte top coat it just all comes together and he's got his little goatee look at him he's gorgeous i love him and i love how bright everything is it's all lewis hamilton inspired go and check him out if you haven't already do you know what i mean it's a bit gorgeous stuff it's a bit gorgeous so there you are guys don't forget to check us out on facebook and instagram and all that shebang everything i've used today will be listed below and i'll see you guys in the next video Ta -da!